Hey guys, Casey Foster here from NetcodeGuides.com doing another demo review for Elias or Ias, not sure to pronounce that, on his DE Dust 2 matchmaking game. He's currently a DMG Distinguished Master Guardian and he says about his um, play, he says, I have my timings and decision making all over the place it seems. I am often caught in, in, in un, inopportune moments like with a nade in hand and also have problems knowing when to rotate and which entrance to the sites I should take. I have problems rotating because as a lurker myself I am constantly expecting an opponent looking to cut off rotators at every corner and it affects my psyche. So here we are on the pistol round. Obviously I've watched this demo. Um, they do a pistol round B rush, good shot there on the guy in sight, and one of the things he just said in his little uh, description is, I am often caught in inopportune moments, like with a nade in hand and also have problems knowing blah blah blah. So you can see right here in about a second, you are just completely avoiding or not paying attention to this dude at doors. Any like average Counter-Strike player would have easily headshot you in this situation. He has a clear shot at you. You're not even jiggle peeking him. You're not looking at him. You're just a free frag running across the site. Somehow he doesn't hit you with any of those four bullets. Um, and then you obviously get the guy in sight because he's fighting your teammate at quad or at uh, car. Good job. But you definitely should have died to that dude crossing the site. Um, I'm really surprised no nades were coming in, no flashes. Obviously they don't have any, but... Uh, they they pretty much should. Um, it's CT side pistol around. That's what you do. So, you know that's th that is your play style to a T. You need to just be more aware and use your position better to um, help you in that situation. So that instead of just running across the doors to just fight that dude in the back of sight, you could have used the big box here in front of you to avoid that dude and used your angle to try and fight the guy at doors. Um, obviously you got away with it, you crossed the site, got the kill on the dude in sight. And here's another situation. There's another guy at doors, and you're exposing yourself to doors, and you're just totally not even looking at him. You just, I mean, you just have to be more aware of when you're putting yourself in situations of when you can be shot. Um, obviously he doesn't kill you again, he gets some good damage off on you, and in your earlier description you said I often get caught in inopportune moments this is the third time in the same round where you're gonna get caught out so you're you're you have to bomb out for some reason there's four of your teammate alive four of your teammates alive three of your teammates alive including you versus two players so you're in a four on two situation you guys have the bomb site there's a minute and 36 seconds left obviously you got your teammates are shooting these guys outside doors even if they weren't outside doors there's no reason to rush this bomb plant there's no reason to jump out and fully expose yourself again to another player here um there's really no, really no reason to force this or rush this so basically you're going to be a free frag to this dude here at window because obviously you have the bomb out and you're going to try and go back behind the box and he's going to get a free kill bomb down so it it, it was just you know, in, in, in like I said, actually that was four times in the same round you got caught out in inopportune moments. You were putting yourself in positions where the bad guys were looking at you and you were not looking at them. Um, you just have to be more aware. You have to know that they're going to be there. They're going to try and stop you from planting the bomb. They're going to be out there contesting the bomb site. You, there's, you know, again, there's no real reason they even have the bomb out. A minute and 35 seconds left in the round. Um, you could have taken all the time in your world. In the world, you could have stayed at big box. Um, you know, held off. You know, maybe your teammates would have got another pick or something. Um, you know, look at your your radar. You have two teammates in lower B. They're definitely going to potentially flank around to mid, and you guys would have been in a great situation um, to win that round. So, four times in run round, putting yourself in inopportune moments. Use your positioning to your advantages, and don't get caught out. So obviously you died, the bomb's down, and you're, I think this demo dude ends up winning a 2v1 to get you guys the round. All right, and here you guys are on an eco round. Um, this is another good example of needing to expect certain things that are going to happen. So you know you guys are on an eco round. Um, you know they're going to have big guns, and this is a really standard play. Um, to do a cat push and for the player to spot you guys like this Jubaka dude on catwalk. So he's standing here with an op. He jumped, saw you guys. And at this point, 
if you watch any like pro match, any kind of situation like that, you're in lower B and you spot somebody cat and they didn't take a shot at you, you will see every single player just run up the stairs and run away because a nade is going to come. And sure enough, he throws a nade. Obviously, it didn't do a whole lot of damage to you, but it could have done a whole lot more. And your teammate kind of blocked you there. But it's just another one of those kind of things. You just kind of have to expect that. And, you know, they they have big guns. So they're going to try and keep their distance from you. So he was really just getting information, saying, okay, there was a few lower B. I'm going to throw a nade and fall back. And that, cause that's, that's exactly what he did. So it's just another one of those things. Just try not to get caught out in situations. And you kind of just have to expect it. So on to the next thing. All right. And here we are. Uh, they're actually on an eco. You guys took long. One of your teammates died on the other side of the map, uh, dropped his AK, and you guys are in a three on four. So one of the things you know that you do a lot is you get caught out in, in opportune moments. One of them is about to happen here. So good job, you know, clearing uh, game helper right there. But look where your crosshair is at right now. If there was a guy in sight or if there was a guy at low CT spawn right here at the lacrosse, you, 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 don't have your crosshair where he would be. So you're going to cross, you're going to cr be crossing long A right here. This is pretty much, you can guarantee that there's going to be CTs looking this way if they know you guys are coming long. They're either going to be beyond CT spawn, in CT spawn, right and left side CT spawn, on catwalk. There's like a billion <laughs> positions that they can be at in this situation when you're crossing long and they know you're going to be there. So look where your crosshair placement's at. So this is this goes hand in hand with being caught out. You're you're unprepared as to where the bad guy will be. So when I would have liked you to have you know cr started to cross or jiggle peek this uh, edge right here, the the left wall into CT spot, and then if you don't see anybody, then start to cross long so that you can eliminate where posi eliminate positions as to where people could be. So then you would have cleared CT spawn. Then you would have moved your crosshair up to catwalk where this bad guy's at. Obviously, we have x-ray. We can see this. But it's just a standard way that you clear long when you're crossing it when they know you're going to be there. Because you can pretty much guarantee some kind of gunfight here. So your crosshair position or placement isn't the best right here. You're going to have to adjust your aim. He gets a shot off on you with a deagle. Um, you know, does some damage to you. You return damage to him. And you continue to cross long. So... It was it, the positioning plus your crosshair placement got you hit, basically, and put you into a situation where you probably could have got the kill if your crosshair was in the right spot and you didn't have to adjust your aim accordingly. So here you are. You've made it to ramp. Um, you know, there's a guy on cat. So right there, I, I went by it too fast. You could have been shot a, a, again from the guys on cat when you crossed that little pos that little space from the single box right there to the barrel. They were peeked out on cat. Um, you were you. If anybody on the other team that dude with the AK or the players had decent aim, they would have killed you when you crossed or got at least a shot off on you. So another situation where you put yourself out there um, in a bad position to be shot at. You just have to be more aware and you have to be more cautious. And if you're going to cross there without any kind of cover, you have to be willing or ready to shoot back at them. So here you are again in the same round. This is the one, two, this is going to be the third time in the round where you're going to put yourself in a situation where you cannot return fire and they're looking at you and you're not ready. And boom, you died. They were staring, standing there on cat. You walked over the ledge, and you were not ready for it. Your crosshair was nowhere to be found, and you just put yourself in a situation where they can shoot at you. You can't return fire, and you were not prepared for where they were at. You just have to be more aware that they're going to be looking at you. They're going to be trying to do some damage. They're obviously on an eco. They have pistols. They're going to get aggressive. That's what they're going to do. The only way they're going to win that is if they get aggressive. So... Um, you know, you just got to be a little bit more aware. Uh, obviously, you didn't have any equipment there, but, you know, you still could have just jiggle peeked over the top of the box, um, jiggle peeked back down the ramp, and try to use your AK's distance versus their pistols um, on catwalk. Obviously, they had deagles, so the distance thing isn't really um, in your advantage or um, working on your side as much. Oh, wow, I got a double nade. So just try to do that next time. Try to use uh, your positioning more. Um, try to just be a little bit more aware. And here we are. Um, this is your guys' first like gun versus gun, real real gun versus gun round. Um, this is something new you've started to do. 
um, that I've noticed. And you have a full buy here. Uh, you've got a molly, a smoke, flash, flash. Really good buy. So one minute, 52 seconds into the round, or left in the round. Coming to catwalk, um, you're about to burn this Molotov. I, I'm, I'm, they have not come fast cat a single time the entire, their entire T-half, and your guys mid aren't shooting their guns at all. Uh, so there's no real reason to do that yet. And one minute, 42 seconds left, a smoke. Obviously there, yes, there is a guy on cat, but first off, you don't throw that smoke there on cat unless you're going to be playing with the smoke. The better a better use of that smoke is when they're executing on cat, and you throw the smoke right there at that cement stack. You basically throw the smoke there. It forces them to run on the opposite side of the smoke, exposing themselves to gunfire from all throughout the site. They have no cover. That would have been a better use of the smoke. And then, obviously, you're standing out here in the open. Um, you have some teammates at long, and you're just basically, uh, you, you have no cover, you're out in the open, um, nothing's really going on on cat, and you threw a flash, obviously you flash them all, you're still completely exposing yourself to the elements, um, you've wasted pretty much all your equipment now, you have one flash left, and they haven't even started executing their strat, so you would want to save your equipment and better utilize it, so now you're in trouble. You probably don't even know that they're up cat, and there's three guys that are right on the opposite side of the stairs. You're in a horrible spot. You're going to get completely surprised. There's You would be lucky if you got a kill here or even did some damage, but you're throwing a flash. They're going to come right up the stairs. Jubaka headshots you instantly. That is not a bad play by your teammates. That's not a bad play by the setup. That's simply a bad position. You would have been better off staying off and staying at the uh, bomb site and just shooting over that smaller uh, box there because your head just comes up over it. But basically, you need to just be a little bit more passive. You're as a counter terrorist, they have to come to you. They have to push you. They have to take the bomb site. So what what a best best case scenario would have been? You would have been in sight. They would have come up cat. They would have thrown a flash and nade or something. You would have seen them. You would have known that they're there. You would have thrown that smoke. Boom, that blocks them off. That's, that delays their whole strat for 15 seconds. Then, if they decide to run through it, you have a, you have some kills that are, you know, or you have the advantage. I'm not going to say you're going to get the kill, but you would have had the advantage being in sight because they have to push out of the smoke and into your crosshair. Then, say you get, get a shot off, uh, maybe kill one, maybe do some damage. You th then throw you that first flash, and then that flashes them all. You hide a little bit. You let your teammates shoot them from the side. Then, if they continue to run at you, you throw a Molotov right in front of you or at them, and that's going to push them back, or they're going to have to run through it and take the damage. Then you flash them again, and at that point, you've used all your equipment. That's while they're executing the strat. You've delayed them. You've done damage. You've potentially even killed one. Um, but instead, you let yourself get out and just get free fragged, and now you've put your teammates in a four-on-five situation, and you could have easily just taking control of that whole entire play with people, three people coming cat with the perfect equipment that you had. So add that to your, your strat book and use it the next time. All right. And here we are in the next round. The, the, the round after you just did the exact same thing. So early in the round, you mollied cat. 146 left in the round. There's a nade. And there's your first flash. Or was that a smoke? Uh, either way. Um, no execution, no information. You don't know where they're at. The, your teammate may have said they've been of cat, but they're just going to take cat every round and just sit there and bait your flashes and nades. That's a really standard play. So try not to make the same mistake again. Try to use your equipment to your advantage. Um, we have you know lots of videos for that as well. Um, you are completely exposing yourself at this position right here from long A. Obviously, you have teammates at long A, so you would expect some kind of call or information um, from your teammates, but you don't. So you just got dinked from a dude at long, and you adjusted your position there. So the another super important thing in Counter-Strike is playing off of your teammates. So obviously, in a matchmaking or a pug, you don't have the best of communication um, with your teammates. And 
it's just one of those things you have to do as a Counter-Strike player. You have to play off of your teammates. So you see your radar. Okay, I have a guy, a game helper, and my teammate is mid. So basically, we are going to be taking the fight at long A. Obviously, this isn't the best setup, but you're going to basically be having to... You're going to force yourself to play off your teammates. It may not be the best play, but it's going to increase your chances of winning the round. And you fall back to site. Your teammate gets a kill. And they're just nading you, flashing you. And your teammate is already rotated. And you're kind of just still pigeoned in sight. Um, you, you would, you would at this kind of point in time, you kind of want to make a play. So you saw that dude drop spawn. He got a free frag on your teammate. And now they've pushed up on long and killed your teammate. So you haven't really contributed much to the round there. You haven't peeked and tried to bait those dudes at long to shoot at you while your teammate at game helper could have killed them as they were coming up long. Um, you weren't peeking cat on that dude early when he dropped CT spawn. Obviously, this dude still knows you're in sight, so he's throwing some crap at you. And you get killed by the dude on cat. Or potentially that dude that was at long A that was posted on you the whole time uh, by pit. You know, it's just, you have to play off your teammates. You have to, in those kind of situations, you have to just try and make a play. So, that concludes this demo review. So, to recap, let me um, turn the volume down here and I'll talk for a second. So, to recap, your, your, your positioning got you killed a lot. Um, you, were, you were being... Um, surprised. That's the best way to explain this. You were surprised in a lot of situations. Um, it's, you know, it, it's nothing um, to be, you know, super worried about. It's something you can you can fix very easily um, by just getting yourself in these kind of situations just a little bit more, and just being more. Uh, uh, I don't know the word. Basically, just knowing that. Or expecting. Yeah, it's a really good word. So you you just need to expect that people are going to be in places, and all of this comes with um, you know having game sense and playing the game a bit, and basically just knowing where the bad guys are going to be in situations. You know, if you have like right now, you guys are in a five on two. This guy's shooting at you. You pretty much have a decent idea of where the other guy's going to be and what they're going to do. They know that they're going to have to group up um, to win this round, and. It's just one of those things you just learn by just playing Counter-Strike. But just, you know, for your next games going forward, just expect, you know, bad guys to be in a place where they can be. Um, obviously, if you're here and your teammate is in mid, you know that the guy cannot be in, like, CT spawn. Um, so you can eliminate where the bad guys can be by just looking at the radar or knowing what time it's at in the round or where they've been. You can eliminate places of where they've been or where they're... Uh, you can eliminate where they've been and you can have an idea of where they're going to be so that all just comes with a little bit of experience and then just thinking about it a little bit more critically so getting getting caught the next thing is um you just wasting your nades uh your equipment i mean th these things are super important in counter-strike having flashes having the right smokes um, that's why we make so many videos at netcode guides about where to smoke how to smoke where to flash how to flash and what the use of these 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 tools are super important you can use a nade for a bunch of different things apart from using it to do damage to people you can use it to find out if somebody's in a place you can use it to put a smoke cloud so you can run by you can use it to um you know obviously do a little bit of damage but you can force players out of out of place out of position with a grenade um, there's all kinds of different uses for them so you need to you need to use these equipments to your advantage and not waste them in the first 10 seconds of the round because th the team you've been playing have would never rushed so there's no reason to just burn all of your equipment in the first 10 seconds of the round so going forward you know knowing knowing what i've said just try to use them to your advantage save them for the round wait till they're executing um, use it to delay their strategy use it to disrupt their strategy and um the next thing I would say is your crosshair placement. This is this comes with just having decent aim, and you get you. I, I can't stress enough. Oh, the Buddha bad nade. Um, you know, don't throw nades while getting blocked. Obviously, he's you know just doing his own thing. But uh, that you know, I can't stress enough how important it is to deathmatch. Deathmatching does a few things. It helps you get your aim down. It helps you work on your movement. Um, but ultimately, what comes with these two is good crosshair placement. When you have good aim and you have good movement, you will have good crosshair placement because those all the, all those three things work together. So, in a lot of situations where you got into gunfights and you were surprised by people, 
good crosshair placement would have got you out of those bad situations by just having good crosshair placement. You would have potentially killed the guy, done some damage back to them. They wouldn't have been peaking as aggressively. And that's just something that, again, that comes with a little bit of time. But I would suggest deathmatching a bit. Um, when I was an up-and-coming player, I used to deathmatch, you know, 45 minutes, hour and a half every single day. Every single day. And, you know, it... it, it it may not come quickly, you know, it may take a month or two, three, four months to just get your aim a little bit better, um, but your crosshair placement, your movement, and your expectations of where people are going to be, um, you know, all kind of come together. So those are the three things I would say you probably need to work on the most, and, you know, just keep playing Counter-Strike. Um, another big thing that a lot of people don't like to, uh, don't really like is uh, playing versus Smurfs. Uh, in matchmaking, people like to make secondary accounts and play versus lower tier players. And a lot of players that are playing against these Smurfs don't really like it. Um, this is this is probably the, the dumbest attitude to ever have ever in Counter-Strike. Not saying this is your attitude, but it's something I just wanted to address quickly. Playing against a better player, you're only going to get better. And you're going to get better faster than if you were playing against a worse player. Um, playing in ESEA or SIVO or Face It Pugs, you're going to be playing against better players on better servers, not 64 tick servers where you're only getting half of the data and you can't strafe and shoot at the same time. Um, you, can't, you can't quick peek things. It only hinders your game. So I would suggest going and trying these platforms out and I guarantee you will get better faster and everybody that's in these environments is, is, is interested in the competitive play aspect of the game, so you're going to have better communication. I would suggest going and trying those platforms out. So hope you enjoyed the demo review, guys. If you guys liked what you saw, like, comment, subscribe to these YouTube videos. Um, and if you want to have your own demo reviewed, go to netcodeguides.com, submit your demo. Uh, you guys can have your demo reviewed. Um, obviously, that's just a small perk of Netcode Premium. You can ha watch thousands of videos uh, made by pro CS players teaching you guys, you know, how to get better at the game. So hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, thanks for watching, guys.